Houston. And what a matchup this is going to be. Martinez, deep left field. Is it high enough? It is gone. Luke Voigt steps up, and that's a base hit. Judge rips one right field, and she's gone. No fooling around for Kimball. Game. Red Sox win. The American League postseason continues on TBS on a beautiful Saturday night at Fenway Park in Boston. 106 years young, Major League Baseball's oldest venue, and fans making their way down the familiar streets and into a packed house at Fenway, ready to go for round two of this iconic rivalry. The 2018 American League Division Series is presented by T-Mobile. It's Red Sox Yankees. Game two of this best of five series. Boston up 1-0. The Yankees the wild card winner. Boston division champs and the best record in baseball in 2018 holding serve on their home field last night. With that we welcome you from Fenway Park. Great to have you with us tonight everybody. Brian Anderson along with Ron Darling. We'll hear from Lauren Shahadi in just a moment. David Price gets the ball for the Red Sox tonight. Masahiro Tanaka for the Yankees. Before we dive into tonight, what were your takeaways from last night's Boston's game one win? Well, a lot of things went right for the Red Sox last night. Chris Sale got a win. That was unknown. A three run home run by J.D. Martinez in the first inning to get them going. Um, but they needed four pitchers to get seven outs to set a Craig uh, Kimbrell who did get the save despite giving up a home run. Well there is injury news that pertains to this game tonight for game two and with more on that we check in with Lauren Shahadi. Lauren. Yeah you saw Aaron Hicks kind of favor that hamstring running to first in the fourth inning had an MRI today. It was negative. I did see him running in the outfield about 430 Eastern. He looked OK to me but Aaron Boone said you know what we're going to keep him out of the starting lineup. He is available in a big spot but Greg Gardner will play center for the Yankees tonight. As for the Red Sox their bullpen woes continue. Stephen Wright his knee has been hurting him and MLB approved that he's taken off this roster in favor of Heath Henry who Alex Cora said you know what he's been more aggressive all year long with the exception of September but these roster moves B.A. and Ron so important because once you're off the D.S. you can't be back for the C.S. That's right wouldn't see him again Stephen Wright until the World Series if they go that long so major change of plan here for the Boston Red Sox just a small tweak for the Yankees you know it really affects them the most because they wanted that variety between their hard throwers of right and his knuckleball the you know relief core has really been the issue the unknown coming into this postseason so we'll see how it affects the rest of the series for the Red Sox and as far as Aaron Hicks is concerned yes he'll be out of the lineup they've got enough depth with Brett Gardner but Hicks still can hit and maybe with his 27 home runs this year does something as a pinch hitter. Day off tomorrow for a travel day. This series will head to New York and Yankee Stadium for game three on Monday. Let's check that batting order for the New York Yankees. 100 wins this year, finishing second in the division and winning the wild card game with McCutcheon, Judge, and Luke Voigt. Voigt moves into the three spot for Hicks. John Carlos Stanton, the DH, Gary Sanchez, the catcher. DD Gregorius will play short. Sanchez moves up the lineup. And then it's Andujar, the rookie, followed by the rookie, the all-star, Glaber Torres. And Brett Gardner will be that second leadoff man hitting ninth for Aaron Boone here this evening. And on the mound, the big left-hander, David Price. You know, if you follow this game, it's almost inconceivable that one of the best pitchers of his generation would not have a win in the postseason in nine postseason starts. 0-8. ERA close to six price has had to wear that wear those numbers for so long and looking for that one moment game that kind of takes those numbers away. David Price losing his last eight decisions as a starting pitcher but I go back to a start he made that does not show up on a postseason register but it was a big game and it was an elimination game 2013 pitching for the Tampa Bay Rays went to Texas to play the Rangers on the road in a game 163 went the distance and won that game and helped send the Rays into the postseason they would take down the Indians and then ultimately a matchup in the division series against Boston so that is one of his more impressive starts of his career even though it doesn't show up 
on the postseason register. Talk us through the Boston defense now, Ronnie. Well, they even have a better defense today because Mitch Moreland is in there. Gold glove and 16. As much speed and arm strength in that outfield as anyone in baseball. And Sandy Leone last night was my most valuable player in what he did um, in the sixth inning and beyond as far as pitches blocked in the dirt. Sandy Leone. Back in there once again the Red Sox carry three catchers on their division series roster and we got a great glimpse into exactly why they do that all the pieces in place it is a picture perfect autumn night in New England and we're ready for game two Andrew McCutcheon will step in to lead off home plate umpire for game two is Dan Bellino. Mike Winters is the crew chief. He's over at first base. He's the umpire to watch in case we have a replay here tonight. Ready to go. First pitch of the ball game as Price deals. And it skips in for ball one. And off we go at Fenway Park. 16 and 7 this year and 30 starts with a complete game for David Price. 177 strikeouts. Averaged less than six innings per start. Price just saw the Yankees two starts ago. He is pitching on nine days of rest, pitching on his 10th day from his last regular season start, which was against the Baltimore Orioles. And McCutcheon takes a ball, and it's quickly 2-0. There's Chris Sale, who was so outstanding last night. The skinny left-hander now followed by his other skinny left-hander. They must not feed the left-handers here in Boston. There's the first strike for Price. Talk about the Boston starters with Sale, Price, Porcello, Evaldi. That's how it began. That was the order when this all started. But as Ron mentioned, Porcello was used last night as McCutcheon with a swing and a miss. So that certainly affects who we might see for game three. And he might be, Porcello might be pushed to game four. He still is a option in the bullpen tonight. Two balls, two strikes. Just underway at Fenway as Price faces McCutcheon. David Price has been one of the best pitchers in the game since the All-Star break to finish out the regular season. His last 11 starts carried a 2-2-5 ERA, a 6-1 record as well. Maybe his best run as a Red Sox pitcher. Bouncer over to third base and Nunez will make the play and that's how this night begins on a 5 3 put out. Nice charge here by Nunez two hands and looks it in and that makes the play easy. That was a change up from Price his last 12 starts his change up usage increased 10 percent. So watch that tonight. That's a pitch you'll use early and often. Well, the non fastballs with these two starters and how they get out on the non fastballs is a big story in this game. Price with the changeup, with the breaking ball. Tanaka with that devastating splitter. Here's Aaron Judge now, and he swings at the first pitch, fouls it out of play. Judge's last swing last night was an absolute torpedo into the bullpen the Yankees bullpen and deep right center field got a breaking ball and Alex Cora when we talked about him today he said when he saw that home run he just shook his head and said that's about as impressive a home run he's seen in quite some time first year skipper of the Red Sox in a matchup of two first year managers and a swing and a foul tip right into the middle of Leon and it's 0 2 for David Price. Yankees hit a ton of home runs against David Price. His last 29 and two thirds innings, he's given up 13 long balls. Year one for Aaron Boone. Both managers navigated it well yesterday. And Aaron Boone gave his ball club a chance the way he used his bullpen. He got outstanding work, specifically from Lance Lynn, but Chad Green and Lance Lynn pitching last night. David Robertson also pitched an inning last night. He gave the Yankees a shot. They came up a run short. Oh. High drive 
way back. Deep left center field. Goodbye. My goodness, Aaron Judge. A titanic home run. One nothing Yankees. Boy, Judge rounding third, pointing to the dugout, almost like I told you I was going to do that. Just a little backdoor cutter that didn't stay on that outside part, caught the middle of the plate. And that's a bomb. Wow. About as far as you can hit one. Aaron Judge, six home runs in his last eight. Postseason games. Here's Boyd now. Bouncer to third. Bobble. Nunez long throw. Dug out by the Gold Glover Mitch Moreland. Heck of a play on both ends. Moreland, the slick fielding first baseman, secures the second out. Crowd still buzzing here after that judge home run. Bobbles it. Knew he had plenty of time with Voigt running. And Moreland is money at first base. Always has been. Red Sox started Steve Pierce at first base last night. That's the one platoon that the Red, Sto Red Sox are under with Pierce against the left handers and Moreland playing against the right handed opposing starters as John Carlos Stanton takes a ball. Stanton with two hits including a home run in this postseason he homered in the wild card game. Did have a hit last night, but he also struck out four times last night. I mean, it's 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 really evident that right now Stanton, who can be a streaky home run hitter, really pulling off the baseball, opening up that front side. Just like the wild card game, Aaron Judge gives his team a first inning lead. One ball, two strikes on Stanton. Stanton competing in his first postseason, coming to the Yankees from the Miami Marlins. That outstanding outfield in Miami all three of those players elsewhere this year Stanton and Christian Yelich the likely MVP in the National League and Marcelo Zuna who is in St. Louis now. Two of the three in the postseason Price just missed. Two and two the count teams in the postseason that have scored first are eight and one this pitch just off the corner nice call by Dan Bellino only loss coming today. Cleveland Indians had a 1 0 lead and coughed it up. Home teams have won all the games so far in the division series round. Yankees trying to shake that up. That one misses inside. And the count goes to 3 and 2 on Stanton. Gary Sanchez elevated in the order with no Aaron Hicks in there tonight. Hitting fifth behind Stanton. Full count. Price deals. And a high fly ball center field. Jackie Bradley Jr. will settle under this one, and the side is retired. But Aaron Judge quiets him down for a moment. A booming home run by Judge. And it's 1 0 New York just underway at Fenway Park in game two.
Now the Red Sox are coming up bottom of the first inning. Mookie Betts will lead off Andrew Benintendi then J.D. Martinez middle three for Alex Cora Xander Bogarts Mitch Moreland and Eduardo Nunez and the bottom three for Boston Ian Kinsler Sandy Leon Jackie Bradley Jr. rounding out the starting nine against 29 year old right hander Masahiro Tanaka has been excellent in the postseason now in year five with the New York Yankees and he will take the mound here at Fenway in game two with a one nothing lead starts the game off with a little slider from Tanaka four post season game started two and two ERA one point four four for Tanaka Mookie Betts in the leadoff spot the shift is on three infielders on the left and Wide. Betts takes a ball Tanaka's pitch usage is very interesting it's like 30 30 30 standard deviation about 10 percent but he'll throw his fastball slider and split finger just about the same What's unusual about that is no pitcher in Major League Baseball this year uses the fastball less than Masahiro Tanaka the old adage fastball is your best pitch it sets up everything else he has a devastating splitter which he said he found during the days between starts from the regular season to this one here tonight Tanaka had given up eight earned runs in his last eight innings of the regular season. His numbers against Boston have not been great either. He's pitched 19 innings this year and given up 16 runs. One ball, two strikes on Mookie Betts. Betts had a double last night, had 47 doubles during the regular season. That finished tied for second with Miguel Andujar. Alex Bregman led the American League in doubles. He had another big game today for Houston as the Astros win the first two in that series against Cleveland. Betts in the air, left field got jammed a little bit and routine for McCutcheon. And that's how the night begins for Masahiro Tanaka. Defense behind Tanaka. We talked about Hicks, or Lauren did. So Brett Gardner is going to be in center field, flanked by McCutcheon and Judge. And Duhar at third base, Gregorius Torres strong up the middle. Luke Voigt's got his bat in that lineup for good. And Sanchez behind the plate. It's interesting. The center fielder, Gardner, won a gold glove two years ago as a left fielder. And the left fielder, McCutcheon, won a gold glove with the Pirates back in 2012, of course, as a center fielder. Here's Andrew Benintendi who takes a strike Woo! from Tanaka. Benintendi was right in the middle of the action yesterday. Two hits, including a drag bunt single. So it's so interesting to see this shift against Benintendi. Three infielders on the right side. 62 opposite field hits this season. Led the AL. And his first hit yesterday was to the opposite field. Tanaka ball and a strike and that one misses outside two and one. Tanaka missed some time this year in a interleague game and in scoring a run on a sacrifice fly pulled both hamstrings. In the air to center field, hit well. Gardner going back and at the track. He'll make the play. Benatendi is retired. Yankees have had a number of leg injuries this year, right? Hamstrings, groin injuries. And Aaron Hicks, of course, becomes the latest, which is a recurrence of a hamstring injury, which he dealt with a couple of weeks ago. They actually shut him down for a few days, but. The leg injuries with the Yankees and trying to get their complement of players ready for this postseason. They felt they were there. That's what's so disappointing about Aaron Hicks. They thought they were finally healthy until last night. Here's J.D. Martinez. A little half swing. They'll check it and he goes. That's the crew chief over there, Mike Winters. No balls and a strike on Martinez. Not popular already.
That could have went either way. Martinez, a three run home run in the first inning yesterday. Lit this place up right away. Big swing and a foul, and it's 0 and 2. It's interesting, right, to see that placement of that fastball by Tanaka. Yesterday, he hit that three run home run on a fastball down from Hap. So the Red Sox hitters are doing the opposite they did yesterday. They wanted Hap to get the ball down. With Tanaka, they want them to get the ball up. Martinez has great numbers. Against Tanaka in 18 career at bats, he has eight hits. Three of those eight hits are home runs. The 0 2 doesn't bite on the slider. Could be a true test for Gary Sanchez behind the plate. Tanaka, when he gets ahead, he will bury that slider and split finger all game long. Hot one. Fair ball. Down the line. Hits the sidewall. Gregorius plays it, and that will hold Martinez at first base. That's a base hit with two outs and two strikes for J.D. Martinez. Well, first, great hitting by J.D. Martinez, but even better defense from D.D. Gregorius. That's a Fenway single, and it's only a single because of the hustle of Gregorius. First, a slider that doesn't really break. That ball was down. That's where Martinez's strength is. Wraps it around the bag and it hits against that wall and comes right back out onto the field. And the hustle by Gregorius limits Martinez to a single. There is no ballpark in the big leagues where the shortstop has more effect on a batted ball to left field than this one right here. The shots down the line off the side wall. The line drives off the monster in left. The shortstop. Has to play it completely differently in this park than he does in any other. Woo! And that'll put Xander Bogarts at the plate, who takes strike one with a runner at first. Bogarts had a hit yesterday, drove in a run with a sacrifice fly. Coming off a monster season, driving in 103 runs, career best for Bogarts. He popped 23 home runs this year for Boston as well. And he popped him up foul. That is going to head for the seats. A couple of rows up, and it goes 0-2 now. Can never give up on a ball that has popped up here. Could look like it's in the stands, but because you don't have the extra level like a lot of stadiums have, the wind rushes over the top of the stadium. So if the ball's hit high enough, it'll sometimes push it back onto the field. Opening up in 19-12. These classic rivals, the Yankees and the Red Sox. First time they meet in a division series round ever, and first time they meet in the postseason since that memorable 2004 ALCS. Red Sox would go on to win the World Series after that comeback. In the air to left center field, Gardner closing. Gardner on the run and runs it down. And that's why Aaron Boone calls him his Deion Sanders. He's the shutdown corner. <laughs> Fetches one in left center to win the inning.
Take a look at tonight's Playmakers, presented by the Chrysler Pacifica and one of the unsung heroes of last night's game, Sande Leon. You know, I don't do this very often because they try to stay out of the, the ball player's way in the postseason. There's enough on their plate. But I sought out Sandy Leon today to shake his hand, to tell him that was a heck of a game he had last night. Saved a bunch of runs, especially in that wild sixth inning. And the defensive prowess of the Red Sox catcher on display last night. Here's Gary Sanchez. He'll start it for the Yankees. One nothing New York on an Aaron Judge tape measure home Woo! run to deep left center. We talked about Steve Pierce and his numbers last night against Ian Happ. Well Gary Sanchez has those kind of numbers against David Price. Six hits and 13 at bats. Five of them have been home runs. A ball and a strike and Sanchez in the air left field that's hit well that's got a chance and this one's gone. Two to nothing Yankees. Judge and Sanchez go deep. And the team who hit the most home runs in the history of Major League Baseball in a regular season come out firing here tonight at Fenway. Sanchez elevated in the order. His first postseason home run this year. 267 home runs during the regular season. This is the sixth home run Sanchez has hit off Price. Price now has given up 15 home runs in 30 and a third innings against the Yankees. His last 30 and third innings against the Yanks. This is just an enormous <laughs> sum of home runs. Ooh. Hello. High and tight on D.D. Gregorius. Two ground outs to third, a fly ball out to center deep by Sten, and the two home runs, Judge and Sanchez. And New York up 2 nothing. There's a strike Woo! to Gregorius. So the Yankees now 267 in the regular season, two home runs in the wild card, a home run last night, two more tonight. Doing what they do. <laughs> and it's not that the Red Sox don't hit the long ball either, but these offenses who are high octane in their own regard, they go about it in much different fashion, though. Well, the Red Sox can score in some different ways because of Mookie Betts, who's going to be the MVP. The ability to steal. Last night they had a sacrifice bunt, a sacrifice fly, a stolen base. They can do some other things. Gregorius breaks his bat. And a roller out to Kensler, a former gold glover, and he makes a play for out number one. Regular season numbers for the Yankees, breaking that home run record. 267 regular season home runs for a team that won 100 games and missed Aaron Judge for seven and a half weeks. And the sequencing on Sanchez, and he did not miss. That's the second home run on the same pitch. The one the judge of Sanchez is that backdoor cutter that he's trying to get that hits the corner. John Lester throws that pitch a lot. But they both found the middle of the plate. One away Miguel Andujar. Who hit that record setting home run in the regular season. One of his 27 this year. Led all rookies in homers and RBIs. Drove in 92. On the ground fair at third. Nice play Nunez. And on a hop to Moreland. That was by design. Nunez with the long hop. And the gold glover at first across the line to make the pick. And the second out of the second inning. When all the stadiums in the 70s used to be AstroTurf, you saw this play all the time. But I like it by Nunez because he knows he, with that one hop, he knows the great glove of Moreland is going to come up with that play. Good footwork by Moreland, too, to come across the bag. And make that play a little easier. Infielder supremely confident, just throwing to a general area with Mitch Moreland at first base. He's one of the best. Two gone, two ground outs after the home run by Sanchez. And Glaber Torres now for the Yankees. Aaron Boone with his rookies hitting back to back at the bottom of this. Yankees batting order and they were in the spotlight last night a couple of times. Yankees just could not get the big hit to 
as Aaron Boone says, make it our game. Well, the, the two hitters, uh, and Duhar, they're, they're young rookies, and Glaber Torres had the biggest at bats. Torres with the bases loaded against Workman struck out. And Andu and Duhar struck out in the fourth. With two on. Yankees were one for seven with runners in scoring position last night. There were three consecutive innings where they at least had the tying run at the plate. Twice had the go-ahead run at the plate, but Boston hung on. It wasn't pretty getting to the finish line with Kimbrell, but the Red Sox holding serve in game one as Price deals Woo! a strike. And it's three and one on Torres. Numbers from yesterday. Yankees one out of seven. Boston three for six at the plate. And there's ball four. Two out walk. Torres will reach. And to the nine spot in the batting order goes Price in Brett Gardner. Kind of an obvious choice there, right? The right-handed hitter, 3-2 changeup. Didn't uh, didn't mind walking Torres there to face lefty on lefty with Gardner. And if you weren't with us at the outset of the broadcast, Lauren reporting that Aaron Hicks is available tonight to pinch hit. You would imagine he would not be available to play defense. They certainly don't want him pushing the injured hamstring he felt like it was more cramping than tightness or a strain of the hamstring but it does put the Yankees in a bit of a spot because essentially they're playing a man short and it puts their fourth outfielder in Gardner who's their defensive replacement in the lineup they will buy a day off tomorrow so these next couple of days watching Aaron Hicks and his Recovery are going to be big for New York before they return home. Uh, but if you've been watching this Yankee team for the time that Brett Gardner has been on this team, he is a heck of a player. He is an igniter. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he has a good series if Hicks can't come back. Turned 35 years of age in August. Was the primary leadoff man most of the year until he struggled. The final two months as he swings and fouls that one away. That's when the Yankees made the deal with the Giants to get Andrew McCutcheon. Who is on deck. Two outs. Eight hitters in. No strikeouts for Price. Four ground ball outs. One fly ball out. Two homers. Unleashing his best fastball at this point, 95 miles an hour. Just got a piece in and out of the glove of Leon. There's Aaron Hicks. Just came onto the bench. What happens when you have an injury like his? As soon as the team goes out to get ready for the game, you get on the trainer's table for about an hour. Not only losing a very skilled center fielder with a great arm, also the three hole hitter for the Yankees. Do it again. Another 2 2 coming to Brett Gardner. Labor Torres the runner at first and Gardner slaps one down the left field line it is slicing and it is foul up into the seats. Thirty eight pitches for David Price already yet to get through two. Masahiro Tanaka. Gave up a two out single to J.D. Martinez. What a scoreless first inning. Well, Tanaka I'm sure is happy with the lead but not thinking about the lead thinking about trying to throw shutout inning after shutout inning. In the moment. Gardner always 
gives you a tough at bat. A lot of pitches per plate appearance. He can foul them off with the best of them and elevate the pitch count for an opposing starter. The 2 2 again. That one just missed. Leon stuck the landing, but comes across the K zone inside. Well, they've been trying to rush him in by RK zone. Bellino got it right. The fans here think that Bellino has been squeezing Price in these first two innings. Alex Cora wants an explanation. <laughs> So now the count full. Torres will be off with the pitch. There he goes, and it's ball four. And Gardner works the walk. Back to back walks. Who birds are out early? Top of the order now for Andrew McCutcheon. Saw activity in the Boston bullpen. Dana Levangi, an early visit to the mound here in this second inning. And the hard throwing Kelly just now getting loose. You figure it would take him at least one batter to get ready to come into this game. This is certainly Price to face McCutcheon. But if it gets to Aaron Judge, all bets are off, though. Well, with two outs, what Alex Cora is protecting against, if somehow Price can't retire McCutcheon and the bases are loaded or runs in, he does not want Price to face Judge again. Well, that's a pretty sweet spot in the batting order for Andrew McCutcheon hitting in front of Judge. Figure he is going to see some strikes and some fastballs. Two on for the Yankees. They get two on via walks with two outs in the inning. High stress pitches early for David Price. And a pitch count already at 42 with this next offering, with Judge waiting to hit next. And a drive in the left field. That ball's hit well. And that is going to be off the monster. In to score, Torres. Gardner will be held at third. And McCutcheon, an RBI single, makes it 3 0 Yankees. And Andrew McCutcheon with his very first postseason RBI. And that's going to be it for David Price. Worst case scenario for Boston. Well, you know, the home runs are bad enough, but the two walks at the bottom of the order against Torres and Gardner uh, just can't happen.
take a look at StatCast powered by Amazon Web Services. The first run of the game, a memorable one here at Fenway Park for Aaron Judge, a 445 foot bomb in the left center. I don't care who you are as a pitcher. That's where he hit it. When it goes that far, it hurts your feelings. You're not expecting necessarily a home run ball in that section. Section 10 on top of the Green Monster. That's where Judge hit it. That's what got the Yankees started. The Yankees have added two more in the second inning, and they have chased David Price. And here's Joe Kelly now. When we asked Alex Cora about Joe Kelly, why he made this division roster. He said talent still plays. This is a guy who still can throw 100 miles an hour, and he'll need all of it against Judge, Judge here. Price exits inning in two thirds, gives up three hits. All three hits produce runs. And now Aaron Judge is up with runners at first and third. And the hard throwing Joe Kelly. He grabbed one of the last roster spots. The McCutcheon shot off the wall. A home run in most ballparks, but kept in by the monster here. McCutcheon had all those postseason appearances with the Pirates. This is his 11th postseason game. He had never driven in a run. That was his first RBI. In the playoffs. Judge into right field. Backing up on it. Betts, he's got it. And that will retire the side. So Kelly gets through the inning, but the Yankees do damage. Sanchez with a homer. McCutcheon with an RBI single. 3 0. The 2018 National League Division Series presented by Doosan continues tomorrow. MLB Network has the Brewers and the Rockies. Game three, that series heads to Coors Field. Brewers are up 2-0. FS1 carries the Dodgers and the Braves with the Dodgers leading that series 2-0. Home teams have won all the games. The Yankees are trying to flip that script here tonight, and they are off to a good start. 3-0 New York. Boston coming to bat for the second time against Tanaka. Mitch Moreland leads away, then Eduardo Nunez, followed by Ian Kinsler.
This is Moreland's first action of the postseason. Did not play yesterday or did not get an at bat yesterday. He's in the game as a defensive replacement late. But his first cracks with the bat here and facing Tanaka does have a couple of home runs among his five hits. Five for 23 career against this pitcher. And a roll over ground ball way out there in the grass is Torres. And there is out number one. That's the first ground ball out for Tanaka. A little sinking fastball to Moreland that he tried to pull in this game. Right now with the shifts. Not going to get any hits that way. You know it's interesting Tanaka all year has pitched on the right day. Twelve wins. His run support almost six runs per game by his mates. Well he pitched the Yankees to one of the most important wins of the postseason last year doesn't pitch tonight with the same kind of pressure. This is game two but he started game three of the division series last season against Cleveland. Remember the Yankees were down 2 0 in that series. And Tanaka seven shutout innings in game three with seven strikeouts in a one nothing Yankees win. Greg Bird hit a home run off Andrew Miller in the seventh inning. That was a key swing game for the Yankees. They would not lose again in that series and advance to the ALCS. A fly ball by Nunez to center field and Tanaka has two quick outs. You know when Tanaka was signed seven year contract for one hundred and fifty five million dollars he was coming off an historic season in Japanese baseball. But he was a different pitcher. He could throw 95 and above with that split finger. But he has a compromised owner collateral ligament. He's become a different pitcher. Mixes up his fastball, slider, and changeup, but still a big game pitcher and able to get outs. His fifth year as a Yankee, now 29 years of age. Year five of that seven year deal for Tanaka. Kinsler takes a ball down and away. That year he had in Japan, it might go down as the greatest professional season by a pitcher in the history of baseball. Pitching for Rockton in Japan, 24 and 0, <laughs> and a 1 2 7 ERA. 1 270 ERA. He finished eight games, and he won 24 of them to no losses. I know wins don't count, but 24 0, <laughs> that, that counts. That counts for something. <laughs> and that was the season that ultimately sent him to the States here and with the Yankees signing that big deal. Three balls, no strikes on Ian Kinsler. Not necessarily, even with a 3 0 count, going to get a fastball from Tanaka. Believes he can throw any pitch for a strike. At any time. <laughs> Hitters count for Kinsler. And a swing and a miss. He chased one. Three balls, two strikes. That's the thing about Tanaka. Any pitch, any count. He's an interesting pitcher in the sense that he lets the hitters get themselves out. He's from the school that he really doesn't want to challenge anybody at any point. He wants to be precise on the corners with an assortment of pitches. Has not had great success against the Yankees this season in his four starts, or beg your pardon, against the Red Sox this season. Four starts, 7 5 8 ERA. One thing he did excel at this year was following a Yankees loss. He was their best pitcher. A swing and a miss. Tanaka strikes out Kensler. One, two, three inning. After the Yankees put two on the board in the second. Now, Giancarlo Stanton, a former MVP, on his way to the plate. Boyd Stanton Sanchez coming about as we go to the third.
The MLB at bat app brings every postseason moment to your favorite devices. You can catch every moment with features such as live radio broadcast pitch tracking in game highlights stats news and a whole lot more. Download MLB at bat today. It's your number one app for live baseball. Brian Anderson Ron Darling Lauren Shahadi and there is Luke Voigt on the first pitch from Joe Kelly. And he has two outs in the books right now first of this inning as we check in with Lauren Shahadi. What do you have Lauren. B.A. I asked Yankees GM Brian Cashman about Giancarlo Stanton. He told me very few times as a superstar come with no ego. He said Giancarlo is one of the few stars who says I'll do whatever it takes to win and actually means it. I asked Stanton about signing that record three hundred and twenty five million dollar contract and asked him how life changed after he told me I was determined to not let it change. People around me changed. I didn't. It's not just physical ability with him. He's a high character guy. Now that deal signed as a member of the Miami Marlins since 2010 he and Nelson Cruz at the top of the board for home runs the year Stan entered the majors in 2010. <laughs> oh and to the count on Stan moving from the outfield to the designated hitter role mostly the DH he did play some outfield when judge was out. But he has adapted well to that role. Kelly's got him 0 2. And a hot shot in the left center field. And over to cut it off is Ben Intendi. That's going to hold Stanton to a single. So a hit last night. Stanton has a hit tonight. Two for seven in this division series, and he is aboard with one away. 0 2 pitch. Slider, he stayed in there just enough. He's so strong that even though he was fooled a bit by the slider, still hits it in the gap. Good play by Ben Intendi getting to the ball. And if you talk to scouts around the league, one of the best arms to second base. Accurate. Here's Gary Sanchez. Rocked his first postseason homer of 2018, his last time up. Kelly misses with a slider. There is history between Joe Kelly and the New York Yankees, and this rivalry that goes so far back and has so many moments to think about, both on the field and with balls in play and great pitching and the fights that have happened here. Joe Kelly was right in the middle of a brawl that occurred earlier this season. And every now and then if you see some of these crowd shots you might see a T-shirt that says Joe Kelly Fight Club <laughs> He's become a bit of an icon here from that brawl in May. I don't know if it would have been a fair fight if Tyler Austin would have got his hands on him about a 50 pound weight differential. Kelly grabbing one of the final spots on this division series roster. Originally he Hembry was left off Alex Cora wanting to go with Kelly because of the velocity just felt like it played better in a postseason turns out now that Stephen Wright is out with a knee injury taken off the roster Heath Hembry is back and active and we could see him tonight one ball two strikes Stanton the runner at first. Kelly with his first strikeout and two men are gone in the third inning. They've had some epic battles and brawls but this is where it all started so April 11th was a play at the plate uh, excuse me at second base and then the retaliation and there they went says come on. Well, Kelly got his licks in but the play at second base. They thought that Tyler Austin a bad slide with kind of a, a, a leg whip and he paid for it later and the Joe Kelly Fight Club began <laughs> 100 mile an hour fastball from Kelly for strike one easy gas out of the hand of Joe Kelly. Trying to hold the Yankees scoreless for the first time. 
Got a run in the first, two in the second. And Gregorius slaps it foul. No balls, two strikes on the Yankee shortstop. There's the Joe Kelly Fight Club t-shirt. Got a Tyler Olsen Fight Club t-shirt somewhere in New York, I'm guessing. <laughs> sure. Should be. Crowd trying to help him out. Oh, and two to Gregorius. And a high fly ball to center field routine for Jackie Bradley Jr. And there is a zero on the board for Joe Kelly. Boston coming up. They trail 3 0 in game two of the ALDS. Bleacher Report gives you the moments that matter faster. Download the BR app today. We're live at Fenway Park on a Saturday night. American League Division Series coverage here on TBS. And the Red Sox down 3 0. They will bat here in this third inning. Sandy Leon will lead off for Boston. Masahiro Tanaka has been good. Two innings in the books, no runs. He's only given up the one hit. Which came on a two strike pitch to J.D. Martinez with two outs in the first. Retired the side in order in the second with a strikeout. Well, some of this is happenstance, but some is talent. Masahiro Tanaka this year, 5 and 1, an ERA of 2.01 following a New York Yankee loss. He's the stopper. Shift is on for Leon, the switch hitting Boston catcher. Boston has comeback ability with their high powered offense. 17 occasions this year they have come back from three or more runs that led Major League Baseball. After Kelly puts up the first zero of the night for Boston pitchers. David Price lasts just an inning and two thirds, giving up three hits, three runs, all earned. And a quick hook for Alex Cora to get Kelly in the game 
in the second inning. 2 2 to Leon. Bouncing ball right into the shift. That is Gregorius, the shortstop, for out number one. Moments ago, Lauren caught up with Yankee manager Aaron Boone. Aaron Judge started this. How much does he change your lineup beyond his own performance? He's such a good player, uh, brings so much to our team, but away from the lines, in the dugout, the energy, the accountability he creates with guys, uh, he sets the tone for us. Tanaka has a great postseason track record. What makes him so good in big spots? Well, he's a really talented pitcher, but so far tonight he's off to a good start. Uh, mixing his pitches, that slider split, mixing in the fastball as well. So, so far off to a good start. Appreciate it, Aaron. Yeah. Great first year for Aaron Boone, team that won 100 games. Been a second in this division to Boston, had to go through the wild card to get here. Jackie Bradley Jr. with a base hit. He jumps on the first pitch. A clean single into left field, the second Boston hit. And a man is on from the bottom of the batting order as the Red Sox turn it over now. Well, with the big shift on against Bradley, that entire shortstop position was open. He got a fastball away from Tanaka and just went that way. Aggressive hitting by Jackie Bradley Jr. And here is Mookie Betts. Second time around for Tanaka. Boston goes two for nine. First time through the batting order. Tanaka with a strikeout, no walks. Bats then Benintendi. And I don't think because of this early deficit that the Red Sox are going to change what they've done all season long, and that is they will push the envelope. They've got guys that are great at stealing bases. They steal bases at an 80% clip. They're going to still be aggressive. That's the batting champion this year in the American League. Front runner for MVP. You see his hot zones. Everything's a hot zone. But a 413 hitter down and in. And Masahiro Tanaka is a pitcher that lives on the bottom half of the plate when he's right. One ball, no strikes on Mookie Betts. Bradley, the runner at first. And a little half swing. Woo! Called strike anyway. Betts hit 346 during the regular season. First batting champ here in Boston since Bill Miller won that award back in 2003. One and one. And a two and one it goes. Well, Tanaka's trying to do just enough inside against these talented right handed hitters of the Red Sox, but he's either going to be on the corner or off the plate. And he feels that even though he gets behind doing that sometimes, he can counter with either his slider or split finger behind in the count. That's a throw over with the flick of the thumb by Sanchez. Good move by Tanaka. Quick feet. Handles every part of the pitching game well. He fields his position well, has a good move, conscientious of the running game. Gives you a quick release to the plate, allows his catchers to throw out runners. Boston will try to put runners in motion and force the issue. See how aggressive they'll be down 3 nothing. Two balls and a strike on Betts. And that bounces off of Sanchez, and Bradley cannot advance. That was a fortunate ricochet of Gary Sanchez right back to Tanaka. Well, he didn't get crossed up. But I also think it's one of those times that we'll see occasionally that Gary Sanchez will get a little lazy behind the plate. That's a ball when it's thrown in the dirt, he's got to get down and block it. He tried to backhand it and end up hitting his shin guards. Fortunate bounce.
A one out single by Bradley has given Betts a chance with a man on. Popped him up in the infield. Gregorius coming in just behind the mound. He's got it for the out. A second out, a big out for Tanaka to get Betts. Two gone, still at first is Bradley. Tanaka's control is such that he just never gives in to the hitter. You're going to have to hit his pitch to beat him. 40 pitches for Tanaka has been a strike thrower. Does get a lot of chases, especially with the splitter and the slider. They put the shift on for Ben and Two men are out for Boston here in the third inning. Last night, Red Sox jumped out early. Three run homer by JD Martinez. Different kind of game when you're managing from behind. Jay Happ was chased early last night. The Yankee starter who had been so good against Boston. Well, the Yankees last night got back in that game because their bullpen was outstanding in relief of Jay Happ. Joe Kelly's going to have to do the same for the Red Sox tonight. Benintendi ahead in the count. See Tanaka really slows it down with men on base, all by design. To get a little tension built up in the runners, the hitters. Lots of throws over to first. Most teams do that against Boston with their running game. Two balls, no strikes. And he hits the corner. Two and one, just on the edge for the strike. I mean, uh, just a little dart of a slider that starts off the plate away, bends just enough to catch that outside corner. Uh, you don't get more precise than that when you're behind in the count. The 2 1. Benintendi pulls one. The shift is on. Torres right there to make the play. No problem. And a scoreless inning for Tanaka. He's got three in the books. It is 3 0 Yankees.
T-Mobile is again going to bat for hurricane recovery. And you can help every time you tweet hashtag HR4HR, T-Mobile will donate another dollar to Team Rubicon. Beautiful Saturday night, Fenway Park. The Yankees have quieted down this crowd with three on the board early. Aaron Judge with a homer. Gary Sanchez has gone deep. Andrew McCutcheon Woo! with an RBI as well. Joe Kelly back on the mound. Red Sox fans wringing their hands. Spike Lee in the house. That was the great Howie Singer in that Red Sox jersey, one of our colleagues. And a bouncing ball over to Moreland. And Duhar is out. And moments ago, Lauren had a chance to speak with Red Sox skipper Alex Cora. Alex's short outing by Price. How do you get length out of this bullpen? Uh, we're about to see. Um, like I said yesterday, we're going to try to get 27 out. Hopefully we'll have the lead, but uh, we we have work to do. Uh, we got Joey going back again to get a three outs, and we go from there. Tanaka is mixing his pitches. What's the challenge in facing him? We're just going to make sure uh, he throws those pitches in the zone. We did a good job in the last one in New York against him. Been disciplined. Not tonight. Thank you. And our thanks to Alex Cora. And Joe Kelly only twice this year. Going two innings out of the bullpen. He's recorded five outs. He has one away in the fourth inning. Glaber Torres his second at bat. Walked and scored in the second inning. And a high pop up. Mookie Betts will settle under it. And there is out number two. And suddenly if Joe Kelly is able to bridge this gap here between the starter David Price and you get into the middle innings puts up another zero you give your ball club a chance to come back in a game like this all depends on the bullpen the rest of the way here for Boston you know you have to remember that in the in these postseason games after tonight's game there will be a day off it'll give Kelly and his other relief mates a chance to kind of catch their breath. Joe Kelly has recorded six outs now on 17 pitches. And has settled this game down from the mound for Boston. It was not the case with David Price on the mound, who records just five outs, gives up three hits and three runs. And another rough postseason start for David Price. Two away, Brett Gardner, who walked in the second as well. Those back to back walks <laughs> with two outs in the second inning. Proved key for the Yankees. It was Andrew McCutcheon who drove in that third run after those two walks. And that's what chased David Price from this game. Well, Kelly's mostly been a relief pitcher the last two seasons. But prior to that, 2015 to 2016, made 31 starts for the Red Sox. Was a starter with the Cardinals when he first arrived to the big leagues in 2012. Then here in Boston since 14. That one's in there, Woo! a strike. And it's 2 2 on Gardner. Choked, on, choked up on that bat. Last night, Boston rolling out some relievers they trust, they rely upon, that helped them to the 108 wins, but there was some nerves, it looked like, last night, some shakiness. Brandon Workman and Ryan Brazier. Could see both of those. As part of this recovery here tonight, trying to get to the finish line after the short start by Price. Two and two, do it again. Kelly deals and Gardner takes a ball. Triple digit fastball misses inside. 
Well, just like his last at bat, choking up on that bat, taking a good two strike approach. It's almost sacrilegious in this building to say that he's a pesky hitter, uh, yeah. but he is. So the count is full. Gardner's been at the plate twice. He's been in a full count twice. Walked his last time up. And the 3 2, a swing and a foul. He spoils it. This will be pitch number eight of the at bat. Gardner has already seen 15 pitches in his two plate appearances. Number 16 here, 3 2, big bouncing ball to short. Bogarts makes a play to end the inning. And a 1 2 3 frame for Joe Kelly. He gets seven outs. J.D. Martinez will lead off. We head to the bottom of the fourth. Boston down 3 0 to the Yankees. History presented by Jim Beam, Drink Smart, 31-year-old J.D. Martinez, MVP candidate this season. Drafted by the Astros, his career changed when he went to Detroit, and just another fantastic season. As he starts this inning for Boston, we go to the bottom of the fourth, had a single in the first inning, one of the two hits against Masahiro Tanaka here tonight. Red Sox hitter is not enjoying the strike zone of Bellino so far. Alex Cora barking from the Red Sox dugout. A little half swing, they will ask. And he goes. No balls, two strikes. Dan Bellino says, yeah, yell at Mike Winters now for a change. I'll tell you, in this series, in these 
game and just a small part of this one. They've been very aggressive in calling that check swing. Martinez had a hit on a two strike pitch his last time up. And he sends that one a little flare into right field. Judge will run it down. And there is out number one and a big bat to retire for Masahiro Tanaka. Yankees got a run in the first on the Judge home run. And then a two spot in the second inning. Joe Kelly comes on, does a terrific job. You figure he is done now. Joe Kelly, his longest outing of the year as a reliever, goes two and a third. Only gave up one hit, had a strikeout. Ryan Brazier, who made his postseason debut last night. We will see him in the Yankee fifth. When I watch Tanaka take the signs from Sanchez, it's almost like he's looking at him like, excuse me? Xander Bogarts, high drive. Deep center, Gardner is out of room. It's gone. Down goes the beer. Xander Bogarts, a solo home run. And Boston is on the board. 3 1 Yankees. Well, two of the three hits that the Red Sox have gotten in this game have come on the first pitch fastball as they're trying not to get deep in the count with Tanaka, who's occasionally trying to get ahead with that fastball. Bogarts would allow it. Second career postseason home run. How much you get for hitting the beer off the top of the wall? Boston gets one on the board. A towering fly ball to center field. There is a slight breeze blowing out that way now as well. Mitch Moreland with one away trying to add to it. First run allowed by Tanaka is a long ball from Bogart to hit 23. During the regular season, well, that's the one area where Tanaka struggled. 25 home runs allowed and only 156 innings pitched. Getting into the part of the order Tanaka knows he must contain here and get to the bottom half. Moreland, Nunez, Kinsler. And Masahiro Tanaka looks at his catcher. Yeah. yeah my, my fault. Yeah, my fault. The pitch was supposed to be down in the way and he just left it middle middle, but that happens. Is a two on to Moreland. Big swing and a miss. I saw Tanaka talking to himself. I'm usually pretty good at reading lips, but certainly <laughs> no chance with Masahiro. And another big hack. And Tanaka strikes him out. So after the home run, comes back with a K. Second strikeout for Tanaka. And a good answer. Well, you were talking earlier, Brian, that he's spent some time and found that split finger, and that's been very effective so far. Struggled in his last couple of starts in the regular season. And working in the side sessions and whatnot that allows you to go a little more all out than you normally would in a regular season setup, knowing he wasn't going to pitch only if the Yankees advance and it'd be days and weeks between starts for Tanaka. And he was able to find it. Sometimes those aggressive bullpen side sessions make a big difference. Nunez takes a ball down and away. Two balls, no strikes. Red Sox up with two away. A run is in. 
David Price has made his way back to the Red Sox dugout. Another frustrating night for him. What has been a brilliant second half turns into a nightmare first start in this postseason. A little uh, chink in the armor of for Tanaka here. It's the first inning that he has lost a little of his control. Ian Kinsler waits to hit next. It's a 3 0 count. Tanaka does not have a walk yet. And he misses badly. It's a walk to Nunez. And the Red Sox will bring the tying run to the plate. That's got Aaron Boone gnawing at the gum. His pitching coach, Larry Rothschild. The day of letting your starting pitcher kind of figure it out in the postseason, long gone. Well, and especially with the Yankees' terrific bullpen. Yeah. They've got as many weapons in that bullpen as any team in the big leagues right now in the postseason. They're not afraid to go to them. Put the shift on for Kinsler. Two outs in the inning. There's a strike from Tanaka. Kinsler's had some big power years in the big leagues, had a terrific career. 13 seasons in all. He's won a gold glove. He's been an all-star four times. He's had 30 homers in a season twice. Traded from the Angels to the Red Sox this year. Things the Red Sox liked about Kinsler, Dave Dombrowski, of course, had him in Detroit, knowing that he's got some big game potential in him. There's Dave Dombrowski heading up the baseball operations department for the Red Sox. They got a great staff leading this team to 108 wins this year. Down and away, two balls and a strike. Child a close eye on Tanaka. Yankee bullpen is quiet. There are two outs in this fourth inning. But a run is in on a Bogart's homer. Two-two. Kinsler has been one of the toughest hitters to strike out throughout his career. This year he was fifth in that category. Only struck out once every 8.3 plate appearances does put the bat on the ball it's a light hitting catcher on deck for Boston but the tying run is at the plate 2 2 Kinsler swings and misses down he goes big punch out for Tanaka the inning is over he strikes out two after the home run by Bogarts it's 3 1 Yankees.
postseason on TBS is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Step up to the plate for savings. Visit Progressive.com and by Sprint. Swish today. ALDS on TBS. And here we go to the Yankee half of the fifth inning. Top of the order coming up. It'll be Ryan Brazier on the mound. He pitched yesterday, Ron. He pitched toward the bottom of the Red Sox, or rather the Yankees order yesterday. Yeah. He's got a little different part of the lineup to deal with here tonight. Well, there, I think Alex Cora is thinking that maybe the nerves that he had in yesterday's ball game when allowed a fielder's choice, a hit, and a walk, that those nervous moments are gone and that he'll feel better today. Great job by Joe Kelly who got seven outs only allowed a hit struck out one on 25 pitches 20 of them were strikes. They could imagine Alex Cora who struggled with that decision on who to add to the back end of the bullpen goes with Kelly wanting the velocity and he pitches beautifully in his first time out and I'm sure the confidence rises for Alex Cora as this series moves on knowing he's got another hard throwing weapon down there in Kelly. Sometimes you play that hunch versus what you've seen all season and Kelly if the Red Sox happen to come back to win this game that is going to be a big part of the story. As he settled down this game from the mound going two and a third giving up just the one hit. McCutcheon a big swing and a miss and Brazier a strikeout to start the fifth inning. Well, that's going to be a big vote of confidence for Brazier. TBS Total Motion here, Ronnie, presented by Progressive on the Judge home run. That sweet swing of Aaron Judge producing big power, quieting the crowd. That came in the first. It was 445 feet into the deep reaches of the monster in left center field. Brazier deals and a swing and a miss. What's impressive about Judge this postseason already, and this is his third game of the postseason, he has hits against six different pitchers. And he's homered in each of the three games thus far. First inning home run against the Athletics in the wild card game. Last at bat yesterday off Kimbrell in the ninth inning, he homered to right field. And none longer than the one he hit in the first. Off David Price. Homer in three straight games to start a postseason. Aaron Judge is on the list. And if he stays healthy and remains a Yankee, he's going to be rewriting a lot of the records. Significant records in New York that stand. What a start he's off to. Brazier's got him 0-2. And a shot to third. Oh. Nice play, Nunez. And Moreland can't pick it. Throw goes into the camera well. Judge on his way to second. Boy, the hard part, he handled the throw off the mark, and even the great defense defender Moreland couldn't make that pick. And Judge into second base with one out. Well, I think what happened to Nunez is that. It was a great play but he had more time and he could have stood up and really fired the ball over there kind of slung it from the side and you see Moreland trying to stay on the base at the same time trying to catch the baseball. That'll be an E5 on Nunez. Red Sox really like Nunez at third base. They think he's a plus defender there. He's had his troubles at second base but they like him at third and he has earned the playing time over Rafael Devers because of it. But an error there instead of two outs nobody on judges it second for Luke Voigt and a good block by Leon. I mean that ball he caught behind him and the throw not even close. We'll see how Brazier handles the adversity.
two guys matching up in an American League Division Series starting the year in Triple A. Luke Voigt in Memphis with the Cardinals. Brazier in Pawtucket closing games in Triple A with Boston. A swing and a miss, and it's one and one. And Brazier, before he came up this year, had been in the major league since 2013 with the Angels. After a year in Japan last year, he was shaky in his first outing yesterday. You could tell the nerves were on him. He's throwing strikes here in his second go round. Should have two outs, nobody on. Instead, Judge at second. And that one down and away. Voigt doesn't bite this time. Well, that's the most difficult part of, of facing this dynamic Yankees lineup. You just can't give them extra outs. Everyone in the lineup can hit it out of the ballpark. Three and one. Voigt's had a great run against all opponents in the American League, but against the Red Sox, over his last six games, he has 10 hits. 10 for 23, including five home runs for Voigt. Stepping up in the big moments against the rivals. And he's hitting third in this lineup tonight for the Yankees. Judge with a lead at second. Hitters count for Voigt. The 3 1 fouled away. Voigt, opposite field power, Ronnie, and when he can get extended, he does big damage. No ballpark can hold him. Yeah, he's so strong. And this is a, a zero that Brazier has to put up. After the Bogarts home run against the Red Sox on the board, they need a zero. Loads it up in the splitter grip. His tight slider is his out pitch, though. Full count. And he missed. That was the splitter. And Voigt able to lay off. Good at bat there by Luke Voigt. And now two on with one away. Hey, a reminder don't miss the Brewers and the Rockies in the National League Division Series tomorrow. It's on MLB Network at 4 30 Eastern. Brewers Rockies from Coors Field game three with the Brewers up 2 0 in that series. Dana Levangi on his way back to the mound second appearance on the mound tonight for the Red Sox pitching coach. Well, trying to settle down his less experienced reliever. I mean he's been around a long time. He's been all over the globe playing uh, the sport. But a big moment here. Brazier, 31 years of age. I mean, Stanton, biggest slugger in the game. Two on. Most feared slugger in the game. Stan hit a long home run in the wild card game, pulled it right down the line. Stanton has a hit tonight. Had a hit last night. Two on, one out. Bullpen is active for Boston. Brazier in need of a ground ball. The Red Sox set up to turn two against Stanton. There's Eduardo Rodriguez. Starter during the regular season, moving into the bullpen for the postseason. It's three to one. Red Sox just scored on the Bogarts home run. From the side, the cut of Stanton late on that fastball because of the good placement down and away. And it's 0 2. 
Brazier has induced three double plays this year in the regular season for Boston. Has the downward action on pitches. But Stanton is a low ball hitter. Not sure you want to mess around down there. He's also one of the few hitters in the game now. We talk about launch angle all the time. He's a top hand hitter, a line drive hitter. He's just so strong, they go out of the ballpark. Brazier, though, with the advantage. No balls, two strikes. Judge at second, void at first. One out in this inning, and a swing and a miss. He struck him out. He went upstairs with the fastball at 96 miles an hour. And the second out of the fifth, and it is the second K for Brazier. Well, Daniel Evangel came out to speak to him and gave him the scouting report and executed it perfectly. Fastballs up in the strike zone, and the last one to put him away. Two gone now. Here is Gary Sanchez. His leadoff home run in the second, the second Yankee run. It's interesting how Brazier he doesn't shake off he he just stares in as Leon goes through the signs until he gets the one he wants. We've seen a number of Yankee hitters step out the last two days. Big hack by Sanchez it's one one. Top of the second this is how it started it was one nothing New York. Sanchez made it 2 0 with that cloud. Gotta feel good for him. He did hit 18 home runs this year, but had his worst offensive season. There was talk about Gary Sanchez before the year started that he was the best hitter in the Yankee lineup, all around hitter. Rolls over that one foul. And a ball and two strikes. And now Brazier. With an error and a walk behind him, can get through this fifth inning, has a chance to strike out three in this fifth inning. This will not only be huge for Brazier, be huge for the Red Sox and Alex Cora, who would be another reliever who's come in the game who's successful. Red Sox will have eight, nine, and one due up in the bottom of the fifth. Sanchez's hand is still ringing from hitting that slider off the end of the bat. That's why he's taking a little extra time. Oh, he just told him to get wow. in the box. Brazier just told Sanchez to get in the box. And Sanchez had words for Brazier. Get in the box. I can read those lips. <laughs> okay, exactly. One and two the count on Sanchez. Two on. And a swing and a miss. He struck him out. And a stare down. On his way to the first base dugout. Brazier strikes out three. Works around an error. And it's still 3 1 Yankees.
This 2018 American League Division Series is presented by T-Mobile. An exchange of words and glares between Brazier and Sanchez, and Brazier strikes him out to end the inning. And Fenway Park starting to rumble now, and the Red Sox down two will send up Sandy Leon. We talked during the break whether Boston might pinch hit for Leon, carrying three catchers on their roster, but they're going to let it ride with their starter. Mm. Maybe too early to use the pinch hitter for Alex Cora at this point. Masahiro Tanaka back on the mound and a swing and a miss makes it 0-2 quickly. What's interesting is that in the bullpen for the Yankees, Dylan Patances going to maybe use him very similar if Tanaka fails here in the fifth, exactly like he was used in the wild card game when he came in for Severino. And he was loosening during the break, so maybe one batter, maybe a man that reaches and a decision would be made. At least he's ready to face Jackie Bradley Jr., who is due next. The easier decision would be if Tanaka could give him six more outs. 8 9 1 coming up here in the Red Sox fifth. And the 1 2, Leon takes a ball. 2 2 now. And that's really what it's about, right? You have the 8 ninth hitter. If somehow Tanaka gets one or two of these run hitters on, then yeah, you turn the lineup over for the third time. And he probably, Aaron Boone, doesn't want Tanaka to face that lineup the third time unless he retires these two. Brandon Workman is now getting loose for Boston. After Brazier with a nice bounce back after last night. Swing and a foul by Leone. He hangs in there. And the count remains at two balls and two strikes. Sandy hit just 177 during the regular season. That gives you an idea of what the Red Sox think about his defensive work. That you could survive on a 108 win team hitting 177. Bouncing ball, the shift was on, so that is Andujar over there. And no problem for out number one. Technically goes as a 5 3 put out. One away. Let's check in with Casey Stern in our Atlanta studios. What do you have, Casey? All right, Casey, thanks. Both the Braves and the Rockies hoping for a little home cooking that will do them well. Down 2 0 apiece in that series to the Dodgers and the Brewers. Jackie Bradley Jr. now with one away. And the Boston perspective here force the hand of Aaron Boone get into the Yankees' bullpen as good as it is. Somehow get a man on and bring the tying run to the plate. Tanaka could put this on cruise control if he retires Bradley Jr. I'll be curious to see if Boone lets it ride with a two run lead with Betts coming up and the third time through. Key hitter here for Tanaka. Well, postseason now for managers is proactive. There used to be a time that you were reactive. Starting pitcher got into trouble, then you'd get the bullpen up. Now, proactively, you've got the bullpen up just in case your pitcher gets in trouble. One ball, two strikes. Tanaka facing Bradley. One gone in the fifth. Let's see what Tanaka has in mind here. Goes with a high fastball. Fascinating watching Tanaka work with his command, the way he goes up and down, in and out. They call it rocking the boat. Very few fastballs, though, have been thrown for strikes. He really is using that to set up his secondary pitches. He's been great in the postseason. Last four postseason starts, only three runs allowed in over 24 innings. You see Sanchez, he's upset. At himself, that's a. It's not going to show up anywhere. That's a two-strike pitch in the dirt. 
you have to anticipate that because if it gets away and Bradley swings, he goes to first base. Another backhand. It's twice now for Sanchez, who's been excellent so far. Here's a 3 2 and a swing and a foul. That hung right in the middle of the plate. It was down, though. And we'll do it again. Another 3 2. Bradley with a single in the third inning. Got him. Took a little off. And Jackie Bradley Jr. is going on strikes. Two gone for Tanaka. It's just great pitching here in this fifth inning. Well, the, the slider was called by Sanchez. He shook to the split finger, and that was the hard split finger. And it fools Bradley. Great look at the grip. Hides it behind the leg. Hitters tell you you just don't pick up the baseball from Tanaka. So it allows Boone to leave Tanaka in with that two run lead. He'll face bets here in the fifth inning. And for now, Dylan Batances quiets down in the Yankee bullpen. I mean, that's the art of bullpenning, is it? To, to get ready and to be close to being ready without using all your bullets. Defensive swing Ooh. by Betts. One ball, one strike on Mookie, who is 0 for 2. A 30 30 season this season. 30 plus homers, 30 plus steals, and he drives one. Center field, hit hard. Back is Gardner, and he's got it. Gardner with a great jump runs it down. Betts hit it right on the barrel. A 1 2 3 inning for Tanaka. Big one for the Yankees. We go to the 6 3 1 New York. Time for the Art of Performance presented by Jaguar. And how about the youngest 
to six postseason home runs. Alex Bregman, 24 years of age, 190 days. He just continues to rise in the big moments in the postseason. First onto the scene last year. And with Altuve banged up this season, Bregman was their best hitter. So Brandon Ooh. Workman now for Boston, Ronnie, and back-to-back -back days for him as well. And another guy back on the mound trying to settle into postseason baseball in 2018. Yeah, it seemed like he had some nervousness also uh, last night, but came up with maybe the biggest pitch of the night, striking out Torres with the bases loaded in the sixth. And he got him on the big curveball, his signature pitch, and he hadn't thrown many curveballs leading up to that. Pitching across two innings, Workman went a third of an inning, got the one out, the strikeout to Torres, did give up a hit. No earned runs allowed. Workman threw 17 pitches last night. He was one of the quartet of pitches, pitchers. That Alex Cora used out of the bullpen to get seven outs. Didi Gregorius batting for the third time. He's 0 for 2, had a ground out in the second, and then he flew out to center field in the third. Been no signs whatsoever of the cartilage injury for D.D. Gregorius that he suffered. He returned to the lineup last Friday, so Friday week ago. So it's been eight days since he has been back. He missed five games. What was reported as torn cartilage in his right wrist. It's an incredible recovery from torn cartilage, and he looks good. Did he go? Yes, he did. Called strike anyway, I believe, from Dan Bellino. I thought he called him on the swing, and that's why he's upset. Might have had it both ways. Gregorius strikes out for the first out of the sixth inning. Well, one, let's see if he went. Absolutely not. Checks but the he, swing. That means the pitch is the strike, right? So he called this pitch a strike. Curveball that he catches on the ground. Boone not pleased, but it looked like it crossed the box at the bottom of the zone. First ball swinging and Duhar fouls it off. Pulls it down the line with Nunez protecting that line. So Workman much different tonight using that curveball early and often. Red Sox have Eduardo Rodriguez back up and throwing in the bullpen. Owen to the count on and Duhar. Third reliever used by Alex Cora. Short start for David Price. Inning in two thirds, giving up three earned runs. Joe Kelly was impressive in two and a third. Little handle shot, flare, falling. It's down, a base hit for Andujar. A one out single. That's the first hit for the Yankees since the third inning. That was Stanton's single. And the first of the night for Andujar. A man is on with one away in the sixth inning. Well, good pitch by Workman. Just fisted by Andujar out to right field. Couldn't place it any better. Would be a huge spot for the Yankees to score to add on here in the sixth inning. Remember the Red Sox. At the top of their order, Betts just lined out to end the inning. They've got Benintendi, J.D. Martinez, and Xander Bogarts due up in the home sixth. On the ground, up the middle, and Glaber Torres with a base hit. Finds a hole. Back-to-back -back hits for the two rookies in this Yankees lineup. And the Yanks are in business now. Two on, one away. And Alex Cora is on his way out. Now Brett Gardner, the next hitter, the lefty, you saw Rodriguez getting ready, and it will be Rodriguez to face Gardner in the matchup with one away in the sixth. Pitching change at Fenway, game two of the ALDS.
Monday for more postseason action. We have a couple of Game 3s of the American League Division Series presented by T-Mobile. Pre-game coverage starts at 1 p.m. Eastern, and then it's Astros, Indians at 1.30, Red Sox, Yankees at 7.30. TBS, your exclusive home for the AL postseason. An Indians fan in the throwback jerseys made his way to Fenway Park. So the left-hander Eduardo Rodriguez, a starter during the regular season, he did make four relief appearances during the regular season. He put up terrific numbers, but he is a reliever for this division series, and he will match up with Brett Gardner. Well, I think the key for Alex Cora is six pitchers used last night, already five used tonight. And with a starter going only an inning and two-thirds, the bullpenning is underway in Boston in back to back games. Two on, one away. And Duhar with a little flare single to right. And then Torres with a chopper up the middle. Back to back hits. Let's send it down to Lauren Shahadi. What do you have, Lauren? Brian, I'm told as Brett Gardner goes, so do the Yankees. Zach Britton said, when you think of a baseball player, you think of him. The definition of intangibles. Britton added, he's scrappy. He's a nightmare at bat. He makes you throw a lot of pitches. Then he gets on base. He's fast. He's a threat to steal. He's just a giant pain for opposing pitchers. He is a pain. Asked Aaron Boone about Brett Gardner. He said he's a savage. <laughs> And he's got some pop as well. He's a little guy, and you think of him as a slap hitter, but he can turn and burn, especially here in Boston with the pesky pole down the right field line. Rodriguez stays away from him. Andrew McCutcheon, the Yankees' leadoff hitter, is on deck. Two things a manager does not want when he brings in a reliever. First, of course, is he doesn't retire and gives up a base hit, but even worse than that, is to come in and walk a hitter. Mm. Especially when you have a lefty lefty matchup yeah, and you're playing that matchup. If you think of Rodriguez as a potential. Multi inning option. But first and foremost it's a matchup option. And his first chance and that is in there Woo! for a strike. Needed that one three and one now. Well the outfield arms here for the Red Sox as good as any in baseball. Incredibly accurate Ben and in left Bradley probably has the best arm of the three in center field. He's thrown the ball close to 100 miles an hour on stat cast this year and Mookie Betts just all around great fielder and Duhar the runner at second and a high pop up got in on the label and Bogarts is there to make the catch they call the infield fly rule there catch made nonetheless second out in the inning. And a big one for Rodriguez. Big comeback by Rodriguez to retire Gardner after falling behind 3 0. That was right about at the edge of what is considered infield fly rule material. <laughs> we have been there before. So Gardner's retired, top of the order. Andrew McCutcheon Rodriguez will stay two on two outs swing at a miss McCutcheon with a big hack that was right down the middle but he took something off McCutcheon already has a big two out hit RBI in this ball game his first ever postseason run batted in that extended the Yankee lead to three nothing in the second inning and the last run they have produced. Mm. Rodriguez calling his catcher out. And also bringing Bogarts in. That would probably tell you that they are concerned about sign stealing at second base. Doubt if there's any signs sign stealing with a with a rookie on second base, but paranoia is everywhere in the <laughs> postseason. Yankees have struggled with runners at scoring position in this series and the game and a half we play they are two for twelve 
But McCutcheon has one of those hits. The RBI single in the second inning. Two on. Two men are out. No balls and a strike on Andrew McCutcheon. A one out single by Andujar. Torres had the ground ball up the middle for a single. And a swing and a miss. It almost seems like anyone who has pitched for the Red Sox or the Yankees in this series this year have struggled. 70, 17 and two thirds innings for Rodriguez, 14 base on balls, 13 runs. He has just thrown two. Excellent changeups to get McCutcheon out in front. One ball, two strikes. Crowd is up. McCutcheon fouls it away. This time the fastball. Rodriguez changeup would be classified as just enough off speed. Well, hits its weapon against right handed hitters. His best weapon. About six to seven miles an hour off his fastball. Another one, two to McCutcheon. Missed with it that time. Aaron Judge on deck. Cora taking a shot with Rodriguez. Bullpen's quiet. Only in the sixth inning. Two two. Got it. A foul tip into the middle of Leon. A strikeout to end the inning and ends the Yankee threat. Still three one. postseason on TBS is brought to you by Geico. 15 minutes can save you 15% or more on car insurance. And by Midas. Trust the Midas touch.
We are headed to the bottom of the sixth inning at Fenway Park in Boston. It is game two of the American League Division Series. Standing tall, the six foot eight inch Dellen Batances taking over this sixth inning for the Yankees. He's got Ben Intendi leading off and strike one to start his inning. Aaron Boone is going to his strength. You can see also going to his defense with Echeverria now taking the place of Andujar third. Well, the great play in the wild card game, Marcus Simeon hit a shot just as Aaron Boone put Echeverria in the game. Fabulous catch, taking extra bases away from Simeon. There's a jam shot roller over to first base. Void will race to the bag and beats Benintendi for out number one. And in that wild card game, Dellen Batances showing those flashes of greatness, and it showed up six up, six down. Last Wednesday against Oakland, he was dominant. Yeah, well, he, he can dominate lineups like uh, uh, about as good as anybody in anyone's bullpen in baseball. Patances with the first out on Benintendi. JD Martinez coming up. And a swing and a miss. Let's check in with Lauren. Brian every single one of JD's teammates say he's obsessed with being great. He started taping his batting practice swings so he could see if anything was off. He also carries around a bag full of tools to help his hitting. We're talking balance mechanisms, rotating plates that help him with timing. You name it, it's in this bag he calls his toy box. He told me all the guys used to make fun of him. But then they slowly started to ask, got anything to fix this? Got anything to fix that? JD said, fine, just just respect the toy box next time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now Mookie Betts has started to uh, use a lot of the elements that JD Martinez brings to his hitting. Uh, he's not just a great hitter as he gets jammed. That's another one on the label. And back to back ground ball outs for Dylan Batances. Two up, two down for the big right hander. Masahiro Tanaka goes five tonight, gives up the one run, the Bogarts home run in the fourth inning. And now you turn it over to a highly skilled bullpen. Bogarts with two away this time. He lined out in the first inning, hit it sharply to center field. Gardner made a nice running catch on him. And then he hit one over his head in the seats. Next time up. Bogart's very unusual that most hitters in today's game will stand as far back in that batter's box as they can. Their foot on the back line. He bats right from the middle of that batter's box against a hard thrower like Batances. How big Batances must look to oh. a hitter standing on top of the mound at 6'8 already. 6'8, 265. No balls and a strike and a swing and a foul back. 98 mile an hour fastball. Take a look at the home run of Bogarts, courtesy of StatCast, powered by Amazon Web Services. Left the bat at 102 plus exit velocity and a 411 foot home run took a beer down on its way. Fenway Park beer palm. Oh, and to the count. On the ground to third, Echevarria just in for defense. Nice and easy to first in a three up, three down frame for Dellen Batances. Yankees inching closer. We go to the seventh.
This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Office of the Commissioner of Baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. Red Sox-Yankees, we head to the seventh. Aaron Judge will start it for New York. Eduardo Rodriguez is back on the mound. Gets the final two outs of the sixth inning, including a strikeout of McCutcheon. And facing Judge, Voigt, and Stanton, perhaps, in this seventh inning. Starter turned reliever. Aaron Judge is hitless in his career against Eduardo Rodriguez. 0 for 10. But he is a hitter that is on his A game right now at the plate. He's hit three balls hard tonight. One of them he destroyed for a home run in the first inning. Then he lined out to right in the second. Then hit a bullet to third. That Nunez had a throwing error on. One for three for Judge. One ball, two strikes. What a soft roller. Rodriguez got to get over. Moreland backhands. Rodriguez not there. And Judge beats it out. An infield hit. He never broke from the mound. It's not only that he didn't break from the round mound. He, he, he didn't show any hustle to try to make up for it. It's almost like he gave up on the play. Now it's always a little more difficult for the left hander. But you can see him running whether he's hurt or not. But he never really put right. any hustle into a huge play to start the seventh. Now remember Rodriguez had a gruesome ankle injury on a play at first base rolled his ankle. I don't know if that's in his mind or not or if he's still feeling the effects yeah. of that but. Well that's a big base runner to give up right there. Second hit of the game for Aaron Judge. And now Voigt is up. Imagine that's Judge's first hit against Rodriguez. Now one for 11 in the softest contact he's made all series. Aaron Judge now has hits off seven different pitchers in this postseason. In the age of bullpenning. Well, every time he comes around, they try to get someone else in there. Two balls, no strikes on Voigt. That injury for Rodriguez came in July. It was his right ankle covering first base, trying to jump over a base runner. Yeah, swing and a miss by Voigt. Swing and 3 0. Rodriguez missed a month and a half after that injury. That's a good look. That's a rally look if there ever was one. Seams are stretched, stay to out say of, the least. Stay out of spandex. <laughs> and a swing and a miss. Boyd with the big rip on the fastball from Rodriguez. Changeup's been a good pitch for him. Going back to it here, 3 2. Walked him. First and second, nobody out in the seventh. Remember, the bullpen is quiet. Alex Cora going to let it ride. And another visit to the mound. That was TBS Total Motion presented by Progressive. I mean, what a launch angle. There by Judge Sanchez out on his front foot, but still strong enough to hit that out of the ballpark. And a pitch up in the strike zone off Tanaka that Bogarts handles. The three home runs in this game. We've had eight games of the division series, including this one so far. Only 44 runs scored combined. Now these super bullpens 
are going to work and it's so interesting to look at the Red Sox so this was the one piece to their puzzle that you raise questions about their bullpen and with Stephen Wright if you are just picking us up and you're not familiar with the scene Stephen Wright one of their relievers the knuckleballer taken off the DS roster before the game today knee problems only two mound visits remain we're only in the seventh two on here's John Carlos Stanton and a big wave and a miss There's that change up by Rodriguez infield hit and a walk judge and Voigt on base Stanton one for three tonight. Bullpen is empty, or it is quiet, at least on the mound. There's plenty of pitchers down there, but this is Eduardo Rodriguez's game. You're down in game two. You've won game one. He's going to let it ride here with his left hander. Chopper, third base. Picked, throw to second, and a bad throw. He's off the bag. Safe at second is Kensler. Nunez disagrees they will certainly have a look at this but if it stands at two bad throws by Nunez putting the Red Sox in all kinds of trouble here it was almost like he was undecided whether to tag judge who was running by him once he realized he couldn't do that then he decided to go to second instead of first good hustle by Voigt see that indecision yeah. cost him the throw. Let's see. That's a, that's a that looks like a great call by the second base yeah. umpire Angel Hernandez. This will be a better look at it right there and the foot's off. Yeah Kinsler tried his best to hold on to that bag but I'm with you Brian I think he's off the base. We see it a lot at first base where it is where the ball meets the leather in the glove. I mean literally that's the play that Nunez wants to make because he wants to keep the double play in order to get that out. This replay review powered by Mitel. Calling umpire Angel Hernandez, the crew chief is over there with him, Mike Winters. And it certainly didn't see enough for this one to stand. Again, where the ball hits the leather, in the back of the glove, right there. Wow, Ron, that Boy. is as close as it gets. But the call on the field is safe. There so has to be enough evidence to, to overturn. overturn. It. Yeah, exactly. And they rarely overturn. Tough call in Chelsea. The Fenway faithful feel like as they watch it on the board that Kinsler kept his foot on the bag. We feel otherwise here. Now the rhythm, the rhythm of the challenges the last couple of years here close plays like that they usually stick here comes the result from the replay center and out is the call they overturn it big play big call so Nunez does get the out at second base instead of bases loaded nobody out it's first and third and one away Wow I mean the Replay speeds of these cameras and these tape machines. We're able to see things we've never seen before in the last few years. And let's not forget the athletic play of Kinsler just to somehow stay on that bag, according to replay. That is a break for the Red Sox. It is first and third. Now a double play can get Rodriguez out of this inning. Judge and Stanton on the corners. Gary Sanchez at the plate. 3 1 Yankees. Seen a lot of bang bang calls the last few years. They rarely get overturned. That's a big moment. But Sanchez. And wipe it all clean with a base hit right here. 
Yankees have not scored since the second inning. Two and all the count. Yankees did a lot of damage this year with the long ball. They broke a major league record in home runs. They were especially great with the long ball from the seventh inning on. And a swing and a miss. Wild swing by Sanchez. How about a 2 0 changeup from Rodriguez? There's Heath Hembry just added to this division series roster for the Red Sox today. Steven Wright disabled. There's a drive into left center field. Sanchez is watching. This ball's flying. Three run blast out of Fenway Park, all the way out. And a game breaker for the Yankees. Six one New York Sanchez with his second home run of the night. We talked about once the postseason starts you erase all that happened this summer and we thought judges ball was long this one out of the ballpark. Wow just an extraordinary blast. From Gary Sanchez. Bouncing ball third base, Nunez. And the throw is good this time as Gregorius is retired for the second out. Well, oh, think back to the last at bat for Gary Sanchez. He strikes out with two on the stare down between That's he right. and Brazier. Brazier won that battle, and how sweet that must have felt for Gary Sanchez. First time he's hit two home runs in a game, two or more homers since May 19th. No doubt. Boy tried to come in with a fastball, left it out over the plate. Hey. On to Lansdowne Street. That's where that baseball landed. Echevarria's first at bat. And a 6 3 put out to end the inning. The long ball is the story tonight. The Yankees get a multi home run game from Gary Sanchez, a three run blast, and it's 6 1 New York.
Let's bring you inside the booth presented by Capital One Brian Anderson and Ron Darling and we just witnessed one of the longer home runs you'll see 479 foot home run from Gary Sanchez and I take you back to Aaron Boone before the wild card game he was playing a hunch about Gary Sanchez that he was going to let it ride with him he was his starter and he was going to play every inning he's delivering with the bat uh, you have to remember that he's one of the core young players of this group he had a bad year offensively he might have had a bad year defensively also but they are completely sold that <laughs> Sanchez at some point is going to be a huge star in this league and he's looking like a big star in the postseason. Yeah, two home runs tonight joining with Judge who hit a majestic home run as well and a game breaking moment perhaps with that three run blast to make it six to one powered that ball on the lands down. And so now Dellen Batances with a five run lead to work with. Well you can see how Batances is going to be used they're going to try to get him two innings of work each and every time they have a lead. There's a shot and the shift was on but right through it goes Moreland the base hit. Statcast AI powered by AWS. Projected distance down onto the street 479 which is the longest home run he's hit in the Statcast era it had been 461 feet. Yankees have some mileage with their home runs tonight. Sanchez hit one into the monster seats in the second inning. Four RBIs tonight for the Yankee catcher. I mean, fooled badly on the 2 0 changeup. They tried to come in with that fastball, and I don't know if I've ever seen a home run hit at, that, at this ballpark on highlights or in person that far. Popped him up. Nunez in the air, shallow right. Judge is coming in. He'll make the call, and he's got it for the out. One away. That base hit by Moreland, the first base runner that has reached against Matanzas. He had retired nine in a row. Six up, six down in the wild card game. And went three up, three down in the sixth inning here tonight. Pretty easy formula for the Yankees. Get the lead even around the fifth inning. Yeah. Get the lead. And there is a straight shot to a roll as Chapman. They hope. That's the formula anyway. Well, they got five solid innings out of Tanaka. Makes it a little easier. Only gave up the one run. Ian Kensler takes a ball inside. David Roberts. Robertson has. A 15 pitch outing yesterday. Robertson went a clean inning with a couple of strikeouts. He is one of the many closer types that make up this leverage hey. portion of the Yankee bullpen, the A bullpen. It's not only closer types, these guys have been top of the food chain closers. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, Zach Britton and Robertson. Patances certainly has. The closer stuff, and then a role as Chapman actually owns that role for the Yankees. There's hey. a strike to Kinsler. So the formula is in place, and now the Red Sox will try to stir that up and disrupt the plan for Aaron Boone. Kinsler with a man on, with one away. Rollis Chapman starting to loosen up. I know Jim Rice hit one completely out of Fenway around that area. But it was to the right of the foul ball. Yeah. That one was to the left, but still. I think it still would have had the distance. Apologies to Jim Ed. <laughs> two balls, two strikes. Patances. With Moreland at first, Kinsler is 0 for 2, a couple of strikeouts, one of the toughest hitters to strike out all year in the American League. And he's gone down twice via the K. And he sends that one into deep left field. McCutcheon on his way back. And that one's going to bounce off the wall and takes a big bounce past McCutcheon. Moreland all the way around, and he will score. 
And it's an RBI double. Ian Kinsler on a two strike pitch makes it six to two Yankees. Well, it almost looked like to me, as Kinsler got a lot of this ball to left field, that McCutcheon was trying to fake out the runner that he had this play, but he got too close to the wall. And if you get too close to the wall, you can't play the carom. Prior to the game last night, Andrew McCutcheon had only played 14 innings of left field at Fenway Park. Did not play that one well. All of his outings have come since September 28. Leads to a run. Now, Rafael Devers pinch hitting and a big hack on his first swing. That's going to end up in the seats. It's our first look at Devers in this series. We're watching Mitch Moreland on the way around. Did you see this run? He was kind of clutching at his hamstring as he scores that run. And he is now with the athletic trainer. Boy. Devers takes the ball. First at bat of the postseason for Rafael Devers. 21 home runs this year. Been a down season as far as expectations yeah. go compared to what he showed last year. Thought he was going to get a start tonight against the right hander Tanaka. Did not. One ball, one strike. I don't know whether it's the score. But more fastballs than ever that I've seen from Batances. Usually likes to use that wipeout slider as Steve Pierce was getting loose if Moreland can't go. One ball, two strikes on Devers. Runner takes off and a swing at a miss. No throw made by Sanchez. It's a steal of third for Kinsler, but it is a strikeout. By Devers for the second out in the inning. Patances with his first K. Well, Patance is not paying any attention to Kinsler, so he just automatically takes the base. Smart veteran move by Kinsler, but the strikeout on the slider to Devers. Jackie Bradley Jr. now with a runner at third, two away. Red Sox with a run in. Strike for another one here. Maybe get Bradley to launch one out and they make it a game again. After the three run home run from Sanchez in the top of this seventh. Ninth place hitter in Jackie Bradley Jr. You got bets due up next and a wave and a miss. Wicked breaking ball. One ball, one strike. Chopper on the ground got in on his hands and that will retire the side. This play off the wall by McCutcheon. Kinsler drives in the run. It's six to two now. Yankees lead it seven in the books in game two.
pitch hit and run is a Major League Baseball free skills competition for boys and girls aged 7 to 14. Sign up now, host a free competition in your local community at pitchhitrun.com. Changes here. As expected, Pierce goes into first base. Moreland is out, clutching at his hamstring. There is a new battery as well. Christian Vasquez will catch. Leon was pinch hit for last inning. And so Vasquez behind the plate and Heath Hembry just added to the division series roster is on the mound Ron. This is his first postseason uh, 67 games during the regular season. In fact he did a great job early part of the season but his ERA in August and September was over six and that's why he didn't originally make the roster. Takes over in a 6 2 game in the Yankee eighth. Stephen Wright taken off the roster today an injured knee only chance Wright would have to come back the rule in baseball in the postseason is if you come off an active roster in one series you are then ineligible for the next series so there is a chance Wright could return but it would have to be in the World Series if Boston advances that far. One ball two strikes. And a swing and a miss. Glaber Torres strikes out. Vasquez will secure it at first. Four out number one. And a strikeout for Hembry. And his first action of this postseason. Zach Britton. Looks like he'll be next up in the eighth. Matances to Britton to Chapman. And that's a formula any manager could get behind. One away for Brett Gardner. The Red Sox will have the top of their order coming up in the eighth inning. You get to this part of the Yankees bullpen there is no matching up. Once you get past the sixth inning and there really is no matching up at any level in their bullpen who they have they believe in to start and finish innings to face both sides of the plate. Well when, when they're right they dictate the at bats. It's not the other way around. Chapman waiting his turn in the ninth potentially. Gardner the nine hole hitter for the Yankees. Fourth time at the plate he's 0 for 2 with a walk and he Whee! takes a strike. And it's a ball and two strikes on Brett Gardner. Hembry, a high strikeout pitcher. He's been the guy Alex Cora has used with men on base, the get out of jam pitcher in that bullpen. Was devastated to hear he wasn't on the division series roster, only to be added the next day. Think about the roller coaster for him emotionally. Pitch all year, you're a big part of a 108 win season. And the numbers got him. They went with Joe Kelly instead. Who was outstanding in his own right tonight. Kelly went two and a third. His longest outing of the year out of the pen. Two to the count. It'll be a big couple of days for the Yankees concerning Aaron Hicks as well with the travel day the off day tomorrow game three will be at Yankee Stadium Monday night trying to buy some time for Hicks and this is the kind of score where you wouldn't need him which the Yankees would love to get through this day without having to use Hicks even to pinch hit as Gardner draws the walk and it's a one out base runner. Hey don't forget. 
EJ, Kenny, Chuck, and Shaq are all back for NBA opening night on TNT. It's presented by Auto Trader. Kyrie Irving and the Celtics hosting Joel Embiid and the 76ers, followed by Oklahoma City and then Steph Curry and the defending champion Warriors. Check your local listings. Celtics, Sixers, that rematch of the second round last year. Those two teams figured to be a big part of the postseason picture in the NBA for years to come. Brett Gardner on first, two walks in this ball game. First start with Hicks out. Saw 28 pitches in his four at bats tonight. Has drawn two walks. 0 for 2, but has been able to flip the lineup twice. Close play at first base. Embry with a nice move. Maybe with the left handed throwing first baseman in Moreland, you have a chance at an out there. Not the other way around. McCutcheon. The only run not produced by the long ball was McCutcheon's wall shot in the second inning. A Fenway Park single banged it halfway up the monster and left. And it scored the third Yankees run. Played to Torres. Three home runs in the game tonight. Judge Gary Sanchez with two. Oh and two the count up and in. 97 with the fastball from Hembry. Henry, the fifth reliever used on the ground to short. This will be room service. No oh. bad throw, but the tag is down. Heck of a play by Pierce. Should have been easy. Still goes as a 6 4 3. Pierce in for Moreland. Makes a nice play to end the inning. On the double play off the bat of McCutcheon. Red Sox are coming up. They've got the top of the order. Yankees lead it 6 2 in game two.
What a great sign. No marriage is perfect. Red Sox, Yankees, same household. <laughs> now we should all get along like that. 2018 American League Division Series is presented by T Mobile. Here we go to the Red Sox half of the eighth. Top of the order. Zach Britton on the mound for New York. Mookie Betts leads off. Six to two Yankees, a three run blast by Gary Sanchez in the seventh inning. Made it six to one, then a double and an RBI for Kensler to get it to six to two. The numbers for Britain. Start of the year with Baltimore, has been one of the elite closers in the game in his career. And now part of that very talented Yankee bullpen. Aaron Boone had David Robertson up with this opted now for Britain here in the eighth. Both pitched last night. Britain threw 12 pitches in the game last night. A half swing by Betts, and it's a ball and two strikes. Britain did give up a hit last night in his inning, but it was a scoreless inning with a strikeout. Didn't walk a batter. Allowed a two run home run in the wild card game in the ninth inning to Chris Davis. With the four run lead, maybe you're going to see Britain and then Robertson. Now rolled his chap and has been dealing with knee problems throughout the year. Be interesting to see where they go with it. 2 2 the count on the ground. Big bounce for Echeverria. One away. Betts is retired. 0 for 4 night for Mookie Betts tonight. As soon as Echeverria brought him into the game, that's his third play already as it's gotten hot at third base. Speaking of defensive changes, no Mitch, uh, rather no uh, Luke Voigt change at first base. You know Neil Walker came in the wild card game late. Voigt's spot in the batting order is due up second. Boone must believe he's good enough for now with a four-run lead to give, get that last at bat. Yeah, give him one more bat and then Walker come in. There's already been a change at first for the Red Sox. We saw Mitch Moreland clutching at his hamstring, replaced by Steve Pierce. Only issue is that Britain, with that good sinking fastball, gets a lot of ground balls. And Neil Walker, right on cue, starting to prepare just in case. One away, Benintendi at the plate for Boston here in the eighth. Benintendi 0 for 3. Top two in that Boston batting order. Betts and Benintendi combined 0 for 7 tonight. JD Martinez has the lone hit. In the top three of the batting order for Boston, had that first inning single with two outs. He's one for three. Red Sox have just five hits in this game. Bogarts hit the home run in the fourth. Kinsler had the RBI double in the seventh. And that one's in there. Three and two the count on Benintendi. And he lost him. A four run lead. Walks Ben and Tindy with one away. Just can't do it. Easier said than done. Not close. Hits Sanchez in the left bicep on the bounce. Zach Ridden got a ground out off the bat of Betts. Larry Rothschild. On the bullpen phone. A bullpen which is quiet for now, which will soon have some activity, it looks like. A 
Mike Harkey passes along the instructions and it is Robertson who gets up. Here's J.D. Martinez. 6-2 game. Yankees have a lead. Martinez first postseason at bat as a Red Sox player. A three run homer. First inning yesterday. Three for four off Britain. Britain has struck him out. The lone time he has retired him. Oh, two throws over there. You'd have to think with your home run hitter up that Benatendi's not going anywhere with a four run deficit. Martinez rolls over one. This is a great battle here because we're talking about Martinez who likes the ball down and Britain whose strength is throwing the ball down in the strike zone. Extreme ground ball pitcher is Britain. J.D. Martinez rolled into 19 double plays in the regular season. That would be the only reason you would send Benintendi at first base. He's got a big lead. One away in the eighth. Red Sox down four and Martinez lays off. Fastball down. One ball, one strike. Britain has so much movement on his fastball. Sometimes he does lose that strike zone. And he makes it tough on a catcher, especially if you're trying to catch Corral and throw. And a check on Benintendi. Normally closers or at least former closers like Britain don't have the good move to first base. Applying the I'll handle the business at the plate theory. I will say Benintendi he looks runnerish over at first base. He's got a lead. Hasn't been able to get a good read on him yet. Stays put and a swing and a ground ball. Big chopper. Gregorius goes to second and out at second base. Close play. Torres played that like a first baseman with the stretch, and they just got Benintendi on his way to second. That'll be a fielder's choice for Martinez. Two gone in the inning now. Well, nice play by DD. Good decision. Nice job by Torres, like you said, acting like a first baseman. Hustle by Benintendi made it close. So two men are out. Xander Bogarts. Red Sox desperately looking for a big hit, a moment to launch him back into this game. Bogarts home run in the fourth inning, a solo shot. A shot on the ground. Gregorius right there. Wow. Flipped out of his glove. Styling and profiling. Is it that easy? Oh my goodness. Turns out to be routine to end the inning. We go to the ninth at Fenway Park. <laughs>
The 2018 American League Division Series is presented by T-Mobile. We go to the ninth inning now at Fenway Park on a beautiful Saturday night. Yankees have a lead. 6-2 New York. Aaron Judge will lead off. Hembry is back on the mound. He starts his second inning. Judge, Voigt, and Giancarlo Stanton, if anybody reaches Gary Sanchez, who is the star tonight with four runs batted in. Two homers. Fifth reliever used by Alex Cora. Hembry, if he could give him multiple innings to get to the finish line, would be helpful for the Red Sox cause as they head to the bottom of the ninth inning. Travel day tomorrow, day off for these two teams. They will resume at Yankee Stadium Monday night, game three. Six pitchers used in both games now by Alex Cora. Short start for David Price, an inning and two thirds. His postseason woes continue as a starting pitcher. Price gives up three earned runs. Joe Kelly pitched very well, two and a third out of the bullpen, his first appearance. And then Brazier, Workman, Eduardo Rodriguez and now Hembry back out for his second frame. <laughs> Luke Voigt will probably be his last appearance in this game tonight. Looked like Neil Walker was preparing to enter defensively for the ninth inning. Remember that whole inning started for Gary Sanchez with that infield hit that Judge got off Eduardo Rodriguez and now walks here in the ninth. Been on base four times, reached on an error on a smash to third. Sanchez three run home run of the seventh inning. The big moment in this game. Good call on the jersey tonight. Yankees putting a lot of faith in Gary Sanchez. Aaron Boone almost predicted this kind of moment. He wasn't specific about it, but he said he is he's a game breaker for us. And I'm going to give him the chance to wipe the slate clean after a rough regular season and enter into this postseason as one of our premium bats. I mean, how many batters in the game can hit a ball 400? And 79 feet, very few. I don't think he can find his helmet right now. Well, I think he found one that fits him. That is Miguel Andujar's helmet. Maybe after you hit one 479 feet, you don't fit in your helmet anymore. Uh, I was thinking maybe, yeah, I don't know, did the Hall of Fame grab that helmet? Are they already taking that to Cooperstown? Authenticating there, it? There is a historical note on Sanchez. He is just the second Yankee catcher with multiple home runs in a game in the postseason. You can guess the last. Yogi. Yogi. 1956 in a World Series game. Game seven of the 56 World Series. So a little more on the line for Yogi but you get the idea. Catchers in multi homer games. So I'll roll this Chapman preparing for the ninth. So there's your answer. Robertson was up twice at this point. Won't get in the game and with the day off tomorrow trying to get Chapman some work. Thank God they found Sanchez helmet. <laughs> Got hits in it. The three one. And Void draws the walk. So Hembree's come out. He's walked the first two. As the Yankees trying to deliver a knockout punch right here. John Carlos Stanton is coming up. Going to have another mound visit. Also going to have a pinch runner. All kind of people running <laughs> on the field right now. So Voigt is out. Walks three times tonight, Ronnie. 0 for 2, three walks. And Walker will take over. And 
Another visit to the mound for Dana Levangi. You know when you're seeing the ball well like Voight is that's why he's been hitting so well. You end up being pitched carefully too and he took his walks. John Carlos stand with two on nobody out. Red Sox bullpen is quiet. This is Hembree's ninth inning to either finish or wear. Alex Cora will not go back to the pen down four runs. Stanton scoring a run last time on he reached on a fielder's choice in the seventh inning that was that play at second base that was overturned and that preceded the Sanchez home run. It's been exactly a week since Hembree has been on a mound pitched last Saturday. That was a game against the Yankees. And he's walked the first two here in the ninth. Well, your first postseason, it's been a difficult day already because you're put back on, a, or put on the roster. Gets through one inning and then asked to get another. Nothing close. And it's three and one. Phil Nevin, the third base coach, trying to get as far out of the pull mode for Stanton. Self preservation over yeah. there. Yes, it is. That coaching box is only a suggestion. Only the cruelest umpire would force him back in with Stanton at the plate and a swing and a miss three and two now Sanchez do next A mighty cut and a high fastball. Stanton with a single in the third inning. Has hits in all three of his postseason games. Had that home run in the wild card game. And a bouncing ball to the bag out there. Throw to first. And Pierce keeps a toe on the bag. And it's a double play that goes 5 3. Not a great throw again by Nunez. He's had some throwing problems in this game. Does have an error. Well, he makes a great choice once he gets the ground ball to go this way. But the sidearm through throw kinds of sails on him. And Pierce, like you said, good play to keep his toe on the back of that bag mm. to complete the double play. Fully extended. And two outs with one swing of Stanton's bat. And here is Sanchez now with a runner at second. He's got a chance at more RBIs. Sitting on four now with two home runs. It was on this date. October 6 of 1926 Ron in the Yankee notes great nugget here on yeah. Babe Ruth drove in four runs hit three home runs in a World Series game and a win over the St. Louis Cardinals that was game four of that 26 World Series Ruth still remains one of only four players in Major League history to hit three home runs in a World Series game. One of the threes in the ballpark tonight, Reggie Jackson. Ooh. 
Wave and a miss. Chase Swan and it's 0-2. Been coming to Fenway Park for a long time, and it never gets old, and it never passes you by. That when you walk into this place, you can say Babe Ruth That's right. pitched here, played here. It's the 100th anniversary, actually, of Babe Ruth in the 1918 World Series. He won two games as a pitcher in that World Series. One of those wins came right here at Fenway Park. One of the few ballparks that connects the generations like this one. Here's an 0-2. And it's one and two. Hundred six years young, as beautiful as ever, Fenway. And the Babe Ruth led Red Sox of 1918. Only then to become a Yankee. Another one missed badly. And you know, Brian, as well as I do, they've made a lot of changes here, but it still has its mm -hmm. beauty. Now John Henry and Tom Warner and the ownership group, they've invested a lot of money in the grounds at Fenway Park. The streets outside Fenway, it's a happening every day. Two two. And there's a shot into left field right to Benintendi. Sanchez is out. He'll have to settle for a four RBI game in game two. Last call for Boston. And a roll is Chapman on the mound for the bottom of the ninth. by Marathon, fueling the American spirit. By Geico, 15 minutes can save you 15% or more on car insurance. By T-Mobile, whether you're home or away, T-Mobile has you covered. And by Captain Morgan, live like a captain. Make sure you join us Monday for more postseason action. We have a couple of game threes of the American League Division Series presented by T-Mobile. Pre-game coverage starts at 1 p.m. with Casey and the gang. And then the Astros and the Indians at 1.30 Eastern. Red Sox, Yankees from Yankee Stadium, 7.30 p.m. Eastern. All coming up on Monday. TBS is your exclusive home for the American League postseason. And Ron, it is a roll as Chapman. Saves in all but two of his appearances this season. 32 saves and 34 tries. And he's on the mound, not in a save situation but trying to get the last three outs and get a game two win for New York. Well, he wants to continue what the other Yankee bullpen guys have been able to do. Nine innings in this series so far have only given up one run. So Neil Walker, he enters the game for Luke Voigt. It'll be Steve Pierce to lead off. First at bat for Pierce. Came in for the injured Mitch Moreland. And Pierce takes a strike. Chapman has had 
major struggles against the Boston Red Sox last two years against the Red Sox his ERA is eight five nine he's given up 16 runs in the last two seasons in 14 and two thirds innings Boston just trying to put some men on base and stir it up here in the ninth inning. Yankees go Batances, Britain, and now Chapman. Batances went two, did give up a run. Britain works a scoreless seventh inning, or rather eighth inning, I beg your pardon. Well, the whole thing for Chapman, just like any hitter that has a, a, a leg injury, that foundation is so important to how you throw the baseball. And Chapman has been a little all over the place this year. I shouldn't say that. He has outings where he just rolls it out there, but when his knee is affecting him, he has a hard time finding the strike zone. Thought he was pretty spry in the wild card game. He, he pitched well, That's but he right. was also moving around well. It was a ball that kind of caromed out on the field that he pounced on. And he misses. It's a walk to start the inning. Exactly what Boston was looking for here. They get a man on. Pierce in his first plate appearance of the night draws the walk. And that brings up Eduardo Nunez. Well, and you watch his motion. So much power. Arms and legs coming at you. But not finishing. And it's hard to look at a 96 97 mile an hour fastball and say Velo is down but it is Nunez the crowd hooting on Chapman right now trying to rattle him a strike in there 97 with that fastball right at the bottom of the zone. Two. Perfectly placed. Nunez didn't think that was a strike, but thought it caught the corner. He's tough enough to hit right without the edges, he right. says. No balls, two strikes on Nunez. 0 for 2 of the walk. Boston down four. A man is on to start this inning. And a slider underneath his hands. Chapman was activated September 19th. He missed nearly a month with tendonitis in the left knee. That's the push off knee. That's probably why he's not over triple digits more. When an inning allowed a hit in the wild card game, finished that one off. Score was 7 to 2 in that one. 6 to 2 tonight. And a swing and a line shot foul into the seats. Nunez stays alive. Back to the heat. And he struck him out. Chapman delivers the fastball right where Sanchez wanted it. Nunez strikes out for the first out. Found the command of the fastball to the second hitter. I mean, oh. Right on the corner at 99 miles an hour. No chance for anyone. One gone. Pierce still at first. Here's Ian Kinsler. If you're Boston right now, if you can just get Betts to the plate in this ninth inning, Kinsler's up, Vasquez next, Bradley then the nine hitter, and then you could get to Betts. But that's a tall order with Chapman on the mound. But that's the formula. And you've won 108 games. You've had a lot of dramatic moments, a lot of dramatic comebacks. On the ground, got a chance to turn it here. This one in the game. It goes six, four, three, and that's the ball game. And the Yankees steal one on the road. 
evening the series at one apiece. That's the first ground ball double play Chapman has gotten all season and it ends the game and secures the win for New York. Gary Sanchez with the big night offensively two homers Ronnie four runs batted in and the game breaker in the seventh just big big games for the big game hitters judge with a huge home run Sanchez with a bigger home run Tanaka with five innings and just gave up the solo home run to Bogarts the Yankees are the first team in this division series round to win a road game all the home teams have held serve until now. And remember the bullpen for the Yankees now. Ten innings pitched in this series, only one run. They go Batances, Britton, and Chapman tonight. They're shaking hands and high fiving here at Fenway Park as the Yankees get the road win they were looking for and now head to Yankee Stadium preparing for game three on Monday night. You see Lauren down there trying to track down the star at the plate, Gary Sanchez. Marwan Abreu is the interpreter and let's send it down to Lauren. Go ahead Lauren. Gary you've had so much success against Price. What were you looking for in the first at bat. Ha ido muy bien contra Price. ¿Qué tú estabas buscando en ese turno contra él? Bueno trato de, de buscar un picheo alto en la zona siempre y, y tratar de hacerle buen swing y, y siempre meter a picheo cerca de la zona y le pongo buen swing. Yeah well you know I'm, I'm looking for something high in the zone. I'm always looking for something uh, like that from him. Uh, he threw me something in the sun and uh, I made good contact. You know? And in the seventh with two runners on what was your approach there. What was the question again. In the seventh two runners on that three run shot what was your approach there. Bueno lo mismo seguía con el mismo approach que le tenía Price buscando un picheo alto en la zona de que yo pueda hacer un buen swing y me dejó un picheo en el mismo medio y le pude hacer buen swing. Yeah well the approach was the same you know looking for something in the zone. Uh, he left something there for me and I, had, I was able to hit it very well. From your view what was so on about Masahiro tonight. De tu punto de vista que tuviste de Masahiro esta noche. Bueno se mantuvo tirando los picheos donde tenía que tirarlo. Eh, atacábamos los bateadores trae uno eh, eh, y todos los picheos estaban funcionando. Yeah, he was executing all pitches you know and especially 3 1 you know and and that's what he's able to do you know. Thank you both. B.A. All right. Thank you Lord and thanks very much to Marlon Abreu as Gary Sanchez. 25 year old slugger from Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic has a big night in the postseason two homers four runs batted in and the Yankees hang another loss on David Price and the Red Sox this series is all tied at one apiece as the Yankees win game two by a final of six to two. Don't forget coming up after this short break it's the postseason show with Casey Stern Pedro Chef and Jimmy Rollins for Ron Darling Lauren Shahadi. Our producer Scott Cockrell, Matt Lip, our director, and the rest of our terrific TBS crew. I'm Brian Anderson saying so long from Fenway. You've been watching the 2018 American League Division Series presented by T Mobile on TBS. TBS, your exclusive home for the 2018 American League postseason. We'll see you in New York on Monday.